Good evening. Thank you for being with us. Tonight we continue our study from this morning's lesson, Jesus is the Word, and we look at I am a theologian. You know, whenever a person talks about God, whether they've never completed high school or they have a PhD, they're engaged in theology. Theology isn't reserved for the graduate Bible students and their professors. It is something for all people who live and breathe, who wrestle and fear, who hope and pray. Theological questions surround our whole lives all the time. When we wonder where is God and all of the things going on in our world, we're engaged in theology. College students working through identity, culture, politics, ethics, and trying to understand where God is and what he's doing are engaged in theology. A husband and wife facing infertility and struggling for answers and wonder what God has planned for their lives and and what God would want them to do are engaged in theology. A teen exploring their faith and knowing about baptism but wondering when they'll know they're ready and do they understand really what all that is about is engaged in theology. A person wondering about their singleness, a newly widowed person, parents working with their disabled child, a person in the workplace faced with conflict between right and wrong, and any situation where you reach for answers from God. Where is he? Why am I in this situation? What does he want from me? What does he want me to do? This is theology. The word theology means the study of of God. It comes from the word theos, which is Greek for God, and ology, which is from the Greek word logos, meaning word. So most literally, theology means words about God. Theology functions like a worldview or a a philosophy for life uh, in that it's how you see everything and what guides your life. The theologian looks at what's going on in the world around them, in the, in the person's situation, and asks, what does God have to say about this? And you only find the answer in the Word of God by studying to rightly divide the Word of truth. See, the church cannot be afraid of the issues and the questions. We have the Word of God to go to to find what God has to say, what thus saith the Lord. And what gives us fear is that we don't often know the Word of God. We don't know what God has to say about the issue or the question because we haven't been studying. We haven't been practicing theology ourselves. And so we avoid the issues and the questions instead of engaging. And that's our role is to say, here's what God has to say. Jeremiah said this, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me. Do you see that? That I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight declares the Lord. So that tells us right there, God delights in those things. He wants good in this world. He sees the condition of the world. He needs his people to, to, to know him, to know his word, and help bring others to know him and know his word. God delights in that. <clears throat> then Paul said in Galatians 4, uh, verses 8 through 9, formerly, when you did not know God... You were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world whose slaves you want to, want to, to be once more? Paul was reminding the Galatians of the time uh, before they knew God, before they knew Christ. They were outside of Christ. 
But now they know God, and he says they're even known by God. And the Greek words there are interchangeable, to uh, uh, know God and be known by God. They're, and they express intimacy in knowing God, and at the same time being known by God. This intimate relationship of knowing is what Paul is expressing here. It expresses the value of knowledge of God and growing close to Him uh, through getting to know Him more and more. Now, look at what John does in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. He writes, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not what? does not know God, because God is love. John shows the relationship between knowing God and loving God and others. Do you see that, how he he did that and how he helps us to, to grasp that they're not separate things? When John says we are to love one another, he's assumed their knowledge of God. He knows they already know God, and therefore he's encouraging them to love one another. But what kind is this? It's love from God. It's it's real love, godly love, not worldly, insincere love. When you love others with the kind of love God loves you with, you show that you're born of God. And, And in other words, you show that you are a Christian. And you at the same time show that you know God. Both those words, know and love. So obviously you can't be a Christian without knowing God. Now, Inherent then within knowing God, loving God, and being a child of God is what? Loving one another. It all goes together in, in, in God's mind. It all goes together in His Word. Look at verse number 8. Uh, John repeats the thought. If you, don't know, if you don't love others, you show you don't know God because God is love. So it's impossible to know Him if you don't love. How can you know God who is himself literally love, and yet you don't love? You may ask, well, isn't just loving God enough? If I just love Jesus, if I just say Jesus, and and if I just float up here and talk about love and loving God and, and Jesus and all that, isn't that enough? Isn't that all that it really takes? You see, there's a false belief that some have that, Actually applying our minds to Scripture, actually studying God's Word is mutually exclusive from loving God. They think they're two separate things, and you you can only pick one. But Christians are often so highly inarticulate about their faith. We, We can't even explain what we believe and why. After all that time sitting in Bible classes and, and sitting in, and listening to sermons, we often don't even understand our own faith and can't even articulate it to some, someone else. Why? It's because we've been spectators and have not seen ourselves as theologians, as students of the Word of God. See, you can't outsource your faith. You can't live off of someone else's faith. One day you will stand before God and answer for your own faith, your own life. The reality is that the more I learn about God, who He is and what He's done, the more I want to worship Him and the more I want to grow to know Him and love Him and serve Him. It's an ever-increasing So if you're lacking in your love for God and others, you need to check how is my knowledge of God. Have I been a student of God's Word? Have I been a theologian? Because that may have something to do with the depth and the sincerity of my love for God and others. Now look at Ephesians chapter 1. We'll look at a few verses here, 17 through 23. Paul writes that the God, he picks up mid-sentence, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you. 
What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. See, Paul is praying this uh, in this amazing passage. He's praying this for the church in Ephesus. He captures the gospel message right here in a beautiful and powerful way. This passage, uh, it, it, it ought to have you wanting that same depth of knowledge and, and depth of love and that experience with God and, and knowing Him and loving Him, uh, to get to know Him more. And, and that uh, desire and that want for that deep knowledge and that deep love and that, that, uh, that, that experience with God will send you into your Bible and into prayer with God to know Him more and more. That, don't, don't ever let yourself get to a point where you are no longer amazed with the Word of God, where, where it's old, where it's dull, where it's, it's, you're not fascinated and captivated and grabbed by it. When you get there, you're in trouble. But when you, when you stay amazed by the Word of God, then you only grow spiritually and get to know God more and more. And so you've got to check both of those things in your life, your love and your knowledge uh, for God and of God. Now, Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for what? for salvation to everyone who believes. See, belief will have some knowledge with it. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. See, Paul is saying there has to be some knowledge of the gospel and understanding it. That, that comes with it. Uh, it is the gospel itself that is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. So how can you believe the gospel? Well, you have to understand it. You have to have some knowledge. So let's ask the question, what is the gospel? Well, this is really interesting uh, as we turn back to John chapter 1. It is the message of Jesus Christ, the good news that we can be saved through faith in Jesus. So John tells us uh, who Jesus is in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him not anything was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life uh, was the light of men. Verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory uh, of, as of the only Son from the Father, Full of grace and truth. From the law, verse 17, was given, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, John writes. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. So we see some interchangeability there. Jesus is the Word of God, the good news of God. And He came to dwell among us, to teach us about God and to save us from our sins. And we come to know God through Jesus and His Word because He makes God known. And Jesus Himself is the good news of God and the gospel message of God. And Jesus is literally the power of God that Paul spoke about in Romans chapter 1. And that Greek word that Paul uses where we get our, is what we get our word dynamite from. And so God's power for salvation, his dynamite is literally Jesus himself. And in it, meaning the gospel, meaning Christ, Paul says the righteousness of God is revealed, meaning what God has done through Christ for us. 
And that is the gospel message. And that's what we've got to be theologians of. Those who believe that message, they believe in the person of the message, and they live according to that message. Uh, uh, You can't live by faith if you don't know. If you don't have any knowledge, if you're not growing, you're not. how are you going to increasingly live by faith? Because the Bible says the righteous will live by faith. So, see, theology culminates in lives transformed by the power of the Word of God. So, theology, the study of God, intends to awaken, to heal, to encourage to admonish, to correct, but primarily to know God and his great love for us. So Jesus said it like this when he was asked by some Pharisees and Sadducees uh, in Matthew chapter 22. Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two command, commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So do you see in there, in what Jesus is teaching and how he responded, knowledge of God, the need for knowledge of God? You need to increasingly know God to, uh, to live this. Now, look at what Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 28. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to teaching them to observe all that I have what? Commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So to say that I am a theologian is to say. Uh, on our next slide, it is to say that I am a disciple of Jesus. To say that I'm a theologian is to say I am a Christian. To say that I'm a theologian is to say I'm a Christ follower. To say that I'm a theologian is to say I am a child of God. And that Christ follower says I can't live by bread alone, but only by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Therefore, I must dive back in continually to the Word of God. I must study Him, study His Word, so I can grow closer and closer to Him, love Him deeper and deeper, and live for Him more and more. So I want to ask you, how well have you been practicing theology? How well have you been studying God? If you'll seek Him, you'll find Him. He's given us His Word, which is so often neglected by us, isn't it? Everything else tends to squeeze out time in the Word and and time in prayer. But I want to encourage you tonight Let's rededicate ourselves to be students of the Word of God, theologians, not something lofty that, that, that is disconnected from planet Earth, but true, genuine students of God's Word who grow in our knowledge and at the same time as the Bible shows us, grow in our love for God and others. And if we can help you in any way, we want you to know that we are here for you And you can reach out to us and we will respond. We love you and we care for you. Let us know if you have any responses, if you need to study, if you need to pray, if you need to visit uh, at all. We want you to know we are here for you. Let us close in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for how it nourishes us beyond what any physical, earthly food or drink can do. Thank you for giving us that word. Help us as Christians, as your church, to dive into your word and be students of your word, to be theologians, to study God. Help us to just spend our lives doing that. And what a difference that would make. Thank you so much for Jesus, your son, for what you did through him and 
And let it never get old to us. Let us never stop being amazed and, and in awe and fascinated by you and what you've done for us. Thank you so much for your great love. Help Oldham Lane to be ever-increasing salt and light in this community and around this world. And we pray for our world and help your church rise up and be who you need us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.